Welcome everyone to another video. In this video, I'm going to be exploring a few characters I'd like to call Guardians of the Galaxy Brains because some of the ideas and opinion pieces they put out are completely out of this world. What happened in Afghanistan was a terrible embarrassment for America and everyone who runs deflection campaigns for them, promotes their propaganda, and especially those who side with America in this Cold War that they're trying to drum up against China. So it was perhaps inevitable that we would see some pretty sad attempts at trying to make the Afghanistan issue about China, as difficult of a task that may seem on the surface. We, of course, expected to see yesterday's war criminals and architects of these very wars trying to justify the 20 years wasted in Afghanistan, and sure enough, Paul Wolfowitz came out to do that. Well, do you remember in my video, which was about two or two or three videos ago, where I showed Paul Wolfowitz was propping up and promoting ordinary YouTubers in what appeared to be an attempt to pass the pro-war consent manufacturing and fear-mongering torch over to a new generation? The guy that I homed in on was called Matthew Tai. He goes by the name of Lawai86. So perhaps we shouldn't have been so surprised to find this new young ally of yesterday's war criminals jumping into action and trying to deflect from America's failures while adding his signature, let's make this about China, stamp on top. This Matthew Tai guy had always been, I'd say, somewhat decent at pretending to be balanced. He wasn't, of course, if you were take, paying close enough attention, but he, he, he put a half-decent act out most of the time, ignoring some of the more blatant lies like his fabricated TikTok video he put out, which was easily debunked. But... But anyway, after I spoke about Matthew's link to war criminals and how he was being propped up by U.S. government agencies, it looks like he just decided to drop every ounce of nuance he had left. He put out <laughs> a spectacularly out-of-this-world Afghanistan hot take video that was a level of tone deaf I have never, honestly, never, ever seen in my life before. It was released just days after America's retreat and defeat as well. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to play some highlight clips from his video. I posted them on Twitter previously with a shorter commentary, but what I'll do is I'll talk through them with you now and discuss the levels of hypocrisy we're seeing here and just digging into it a little bit deeper. Now, before you call this whataboutism, I want to cover something up front. I prefer to call this... What the fuck is him? And my apologies. I try my best not to, to swear in my videos, but there really isn't a better word for this. I coined this phrase. I, I Actually, I think I've probably used it before, but I brought it back out after seeing so many people show up to defend Matthew Tai by using this whataboutism phrase, even though Matthew Tai himself in his video was making this about a America versus China argument in many spots, which I'll get to later on. But... I was particularly motivated to use that phrase after I saw one of his supporters say, Fortunately, the whataboutism coming from tankies is usually predictable. I sense if they're going to pull that card, I preemptively start criticizing. For example, criticizing American involvement in Afghanistan before they can even pull a what about that. So my response to that was, I'll re reword it slightly as I'm reading it here, but I'll put the original on the screen. When you currently do what you think China may one day do, and despite wanting to push your supposed more accountable, responsive political system on others, you're not first using your power to get your government to stop doing those things. It's not what aboutism, it's what the fuckism. That response will make a little bit more sense after we go through Matthew's video. But I want to say to this person's credit, the person who I was interacting with here, they ended up asking me for clarification on my position and seemed genuinely interested to understand my point of view. And they actually even asked me for resources and recommendations afterwards. This is something extremely rare these days, and I have great respect for how this person engaged with new information, regardless of how he, what position he ends up coming out with on the other side. So what I did because of this guy's... Uh, seemingly genuine approach to asking me these questions, I decided to write out a more detailed response regarding my position to this guy. But I'll read that to you after we go through some of Matthew's content so that you'll have a little bit more context and my response will make a little bit more sense. 
So let's get to some of the highlights from Matt's video. And I suggest that you take a look at the full thing yourself because these aren't videos, uh, video clips that are taken out of context to make him look bad. The original full video, I think it's like 12 minutes or something like that, is way worse. <laughs> it's, I mean, it, it really speaks for itself. But uh, let's get to the clip. So right out of the gate, Matthew puts his ignorance about geopolitics and the situation on the ground on full display. So let's have a listen. Trillions of dollars and 20 years later, what were we left with? Well, if the original goal was to remove Al-Qaeda, then yes, the USA did its job. No, Matt. Al-Qaeda is stronger than they've ever been, and certainly stronger than when your invasion began. And you're the reason. Your brutal occupations and post-9-11 wars, your raping of Muslim women and children throughout these campaigns, your brutal treatment of suspects, and the terror you brought to these people gave Al-Qaeda all of the new recruits they could have ever wished for and more. More importantly, we now have ISIS, thanks to America, the group that took responsibility for the recent brutal Kabul airport explosion and many other ongoing terrible atrocities throughout the entire region. ISIS didn't exist before the American-led war on Iraq and was a direct result of these American operations. Its members were initially made up Furthermore, I should say, its members were initially made up of ex-Jordanian Mujahideen fighters and Syrian Islamist uprising fighters from the 80s, groups both funded and supported by the U.S., who now found a reason, a new reason and opportunity to reunite after Iraq was destabilized. So obviously before they were ISIS, they were uh, operating under the ISI banner in 2007, but they were officially formed in uh, 2004 as uh, al tau Haid wa jihad and then going through a number of rebrands after that, we ended up with ISIS. And they had a very easy time recruiting local Iraqis who were being terrorized and displaced by America's war in Iraq. Matt also conceded in a separate part that if the mission was about bringing democracy to Afghanistan, it was a failure. If he really believes that the U.S. ever intervenes militarily to install democracy, this further emphasizes his ignorance. No, Matt. <laughs> On the contrary, America overthrows democracies and installs dictators when it serves their geopolitical interests. We'll get into that a little bit later. For now, let's see what we have in the next clip. So where does that leave China? Certainly there's a massive power vacuum in what was once a kind of an American sphere of influence in the region. All right, so we're ready to make this about China, but let's first approvingly and nonchalantly talk about how Afghanistan used to be an American sphere of influence. I'm sure you had no issue back then, eh? But uh, this isn't a massive power vacuum, Mac. It was filled incredibly quickly because of how useless America's operations were. Moving on. You may be shocked, or maybe not, to learn that they've kind of been planning this all along. In fact, China's been meeting with the Taliban for a while now. The images of China's foreign ministry meeting with the Taliban are forever burned into my mind. I remember thinking, are, are you kidding me? <laughs> then I realized that we're talking about a country, China. That well, Matt, you may be shocked. America has been meeting with the Taliban for a while now. Images of your government officials can now also be burned into your mind as you probably won't also say, are you kidding me? And realizing that we're talking about America here. But why don't you think before you speak here? China, unlike the US, doesn't have an aggressive foreign interference policy. They're not going around overthrowing governments and in installing puppet regimes like America does. They share a physical border with the country that you destroyed. This is their neighbor. They're going to have to work with whoever's in power there. And just like the last time around, you left the Taliban in charge yet again. That's on you, Tiger. What's next? Sounds weird, I know, but China has a pretty long track record with supporting brutal regimes with horrid human rights records. Well, you're not really wrong here. They did support the U.S. for a long time and buy up a lot of their debt, and the U.S. has a pretty terrible human rights record. But in terms of supporting brutal regimes, now America really outdoes everyone here. Not only do they have a long history of supporting brutal regimes, they have a long history of actively installing them. 
I won't expand too much on that yet, but I will play an interesting tr uh, clip, a uh, video clip from Raoul uh, Hedebal from, uh, he's a Belgian politician, talking about just some of America's foreign interference campaigns. It's about two minutes long and it's full of names, but believe it or not, <laughs> he even actually missed a few. Chers collègues, permettez-moi de vous faire la liste des interventions militaires, directes et indirectes des États-Unis d'Amérique depuis 1945. Les États-Unis, l'impérialisme américain, sont intervenus en Chine en 1945-1946, en Syrie en 1949, en Corée, en Chine, en Iran en 1953, au Guatemala en 1954, au Tibet entre 1955 et 1970, en Indonésie en 1958, la baie des cochons à Cuba en 1959, en République démocratique du Congo entre 1960 et 1965, en République dominicaine en 1961, en Vietnam, 10 ans, 61, 73, en Brasilië, 64, en de République of Congo, 64, en Guatemala, 64, en Laos, 64 tot 73, en République dominicaine, 65, 68, je n'ai pas encore fini, chers collègues, l'imprésent américain est intervenu aussi en Pérou, en 1965, en Grèce, en 1967, au Guatemala à nouveau, en 67, en Cam au Cambodge, 69, au Chili, avec la démission euh, forcée par la CIA du camarade Allende, en 1973, en Argentine, en 1976, en Angola, les troupes américaines, en 76 jusqu'en 92, en Turquie, en 1980, en Pologne, en 1980, en El Salvador, Salvador, 81, Nicaragua, 81, Cambodge, 81, 95, le Liban, la Grenade, la Libye en 86, en Iran en 87, les États-Unis d'Amérique sont intervenus en Libye en 89, aux Philippines en 89, au Panama en 1990, en Irak en 1991, en Somalie entre 92 et 94. De Verenigde Staten van Amerika zijn tussen gekomen in Bosnië in 1995, in Irak weer eens in 1992 tot 1996, in Soudan in 1998, Afghanistan in 1998, Joegoslavië in 1999, Afghanistan in 2001. Les États-Unis d'Amérique zijn ook al intervenu in Irak entre 2002 en 2003, in Somalië in 2006 en 2007, in Iran entre 2005 en aujourd'hui, in Libië in 2011 en in Venezuela in 2019. Qu'est-ce qu'on a à dire à ça, chers collègues Once again, he actually missed a few. And some of those regime changes involved creating and installing dictators. Um, so, yeah, a little bit of a reality check there. But let's move on. Let's see what we have next. Imagine an unparalleled surveillance state, weapons, tech, and an endless supply of cash to further your ultimate goal of control. Because that's what China will give you if you're willing to do their bidding. All right. So I found this one particularly entertaining because in my last video, which was literally just a few days ago, I was making fun of how he was trying to convince his audience that four Chinese government agencies were hunting him while he was in China, including the People's Liberation Army. And despite talking about how sophisticated China's surveillance technology is, they couldn't find him at home. He wasn't even hiding out. So... I don't know, you know, he maybe wanted to remind everyone that, yep, this is something he still says, even though it doesn't work well with his escape from China story. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't matter because it's true. There is there is mass surveillance in China, and the same is true for the UK and other places as well, most certainly the US. But let's zoom in on his statement of a promise of weapons and tech and an endless supply of cash if you're willing to do China's bidding. Do you mean kind of like how the U.S. gives weapons, tech, and an endless supply of cash to Israel as they carry out human rights abuses but act as a great U.S. ally and a counterweight in an otherwise Muslim-dominated region? You're actually theorizing and guessing that China might do what the U.S. actually already does. Let's make sure we keep that in perspective here. In this next clip, I actually make an appearance on the top left. Let's look at what he has to say. You see, the glorification of the Taliban has already begun in China. And mark my words, you will start to see the Western CCP sycophants, you know, those guys on YouTube that will do anything for the CCP. You'll see them start to paint the Taliban in a good light as well. You heard it here first. Oh, no, 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 Matt. Uh, first of all, I got to say, I like that you put a random tweet from a random person rather than anything coming from anyone who you featured in your collage of targets, 
But no, 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 no. The terrorism apologist is you, Matt. Don't you remember that time you had Arslan on your show and you went on his show singing his praises? The guy who said he wanted to be a better extremist, the guy who said he wants Allah to destroy the families of China's public servants, the guy who said he supports ethnically cleansing Xinjiang, including of Mongols who have been there longer than the Uyghurs. Oh, no, Matt. The terrorism apology grift has been your game all along, and you've been owning it like a champ. I think it's worth mentioning that the U.S. not only regularly whitewashes terrorism, they create it. They arm it. They fund it. They cheer it. Let's take a look at back at when the U.S. media was in lockstep promoting those so-called moderate rebels, or more accurately, folks that ended up being full-on terrorists, carrying out public beheadings in Syria. In March of this year, I introduced a bipartisan bill that would authorize the president to arm fully vetted members of the moderate Syrian opposition. Corporate media and politicians were in lockstep branding them moderate rebels. The United States and Turkey have struck a deal to train and equip moderate Syrian rebels. The training will take place in Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and Turkey. The goal is to train these moderate rebels and send them back to Syria. Arm and train moderate Syrian rebels. Moderate, the moderate, moderate rebel. I wanted the United States to provide arms to the Syrian rebels. The moderate rebels. So there you go, Matt. No, the, the, the terrorism apologist grift is your government's grift, and therefore, as an extension, as a spokesperson for your government's propaganda, it is, a, of course, also your grift. Let's see what we have next. The second goal of China here is building a sphere of influence. There's a joke uh, amongst Chinese netizens that I was told by a friend. And that's that the allies of China are getting stronger and stronger. Look at all the allies that China actually has. We have North Korea, and now we have the Taliban. Who is China's next ally going to be? Captain Hook from Somalia? All right, at this point, I know some of you must be dying here, and you need me to address the Taliban. Taliban? Um, whole situation going on here. I don't really want to go after pronunciation issues. I'm sure I have some of my own, but... I know I know what you're thinking. I mean, that sounds like it's deliberately trying to be messed up or I don't know what's going on with this Taliban thing. I, I can't even say it as messed up as him. But anyways, let's let's just get into the let's focus on the content. So again, for context, I'm guessing, Matt, I'm guessing you're worried that China might want to create a sphere of influence that equals even a fraction of what America has around the world and specifically surrounding China as well. But I love your little dig at Somalia while trying to, I guess, you know, portray them as a country full of pirates, I assume, with your little Captain Hook joke. But I'm sorry, you know, nobody quite does piracy like America when it comes to the high seas. But let's dig into this constant attempt to use China's non-interference policy against them. And let's just take this at face value. You want to tell us that China has terrible allies. Once again, America outdoes China here. They don't only support bad governments, but they create and install them. This is America's history. Anyway, the difference between the China and the USA here is that the USA has to abide by certain international standards. When they make a mistake, you better believe that you know about it. Civilian deaths, refugee camps, intelligence and military errors... It's always covered by the media ravenously. Oh, it's covered by the media ravenously, is it? <laughs> so this is where he starts getting a bit more obvious that this is a China versus America conversation for him. He wants to make these comparisons between China and America to begin with, only to later try to hide behind this accusation of what about is and when someone really wants to meaningfully explore these supposed comparisons of good versus evil or evil versus even more evil at best that he's clearly trying to set up here but this idea i want to i want to really hone in on this idea because this idea of people continually talking about their superior system of free speech is becoming more and more superficial we did bad stuff to people and we continue doing bad stuff to people but at least we can talk about it Really? That's it? Your idea of democracy and free speech is becoming meaningless if you can't actually do anything other than endlessly bitch about things that you're going to continually spin your wheels on. Good for you. You can have a powwow and complain about all the atrocities you commit around the world. And you can insult your leaders. Yay! But let me tell you something. 
Do you know who doesn't give a shit about your little kumbaya sessions? It's the people who are on the receiving end of those atrocities. The people whose children you shot through the head. The towns that you bombed back into the Stone Age. They don't give a shit. I'm, of course, ignoring all the other obvious issues here. Matt probably has no idea who this man is. But let's zoom in to the last part of the previous clip that I just played for you. Anyway, the difference between the China and the USA here is that the USA has to abide by certain international standards. Really, Matt? What international standards are those? I think maybe you're talking about America's rules-based order, right? Where they make the rules and everyone else follows them. Those aren't international standards, champ. Are you unaware about what happened when the International Criminal Court even wanted to start looking into war crimes in Afghanistan? You sanctioned them and their family members. Do you remember what happened when Palestinians wanted to take their plight, which should have nothing to do with the U.S., to the International Criminal Court? The U.S. opposed it. No, Matt, America does not follow or respect international standards. Let's move on. Nothing gets past the Chinese government. And they love despotic powers. They love tyrannical dictatorships. They love corruptible regimes. Because they can pull the strings in the background without having to do much, save for throwing money their way. No, Matt, you're talking about yourself again here. President Ronald Reagan called General Riosmont a man of great personal integrity and commitment. Reagan knew exactly what he was doing, and of course, it eventually caught up with him, and Riosmont was convicted of literal genocide. Have you also forgotten about the brutal genocide you were actively supporting in East Timor? Are you really serious right now? Let's see what we have next. I'm telling you, China won't care if the Taliban uses chemical weapons genocide and violent coercion to stabilize the country enough for enterprises like, you know, natural resource gathering or infrastructure projects that benefit China. Jesus Christ, this is getting better and better. Brutal campaigns in the name of natural resource gathering. This is literally the U.S.'s entire history from its beginnings, stripping islands that didn't belong to them of guano for fertilizer with military protection to the more obvious recent oil expeditions. And chemical weapons? You're afraid that China will turn a blind eye to someone else using chemical weapons when your country themselves actually use them? Uh, can you not hear yourself? Are you unaware of the children in Vietnam who are still being born with birth defects from your Agent Orange? People who still haven't been compensated to this day? Do you want something a bit more recent? How about the kids now being born with birth defects in Fallujah, where you shot spent uranium munitions at them and sprayed them with white phosphorus? When you're making this an us versus them, and you have the nerve to guess that China will be okay with someone else doing something terrible, and that something terrible is what you regularly do yourself, this isn't an ordinary level of tone deafness. This is absolutely epic. It's laughable that the Chinese government can label the West as an imperialist bully when they are clearly the biggest imperialist on the planet as of now. Oh, there's something laughable here, Matthew Tai, but it's not what you think it is. So that's towards the end of his video, even without my commentary. Watching his full video on its own, it's sufficiently telling and is a surreal experience. I mean, I just find it incredible that he spoke this out recorded it, probably watched it back once and said, yep, <laughs> I'm going to publish this. But let me come back to that explanation I gave the guy whose first reaction was to call the response of whataboutism and who was genuinely interested in my position. So what I wrote to him was as follows. The U.S. didn't only meet the Taliban. They had a hand in creating them and continue to support terrorist orgs elsewhere. Just a quick side note on that. There are people who dispute this fact, um, even though many of the previous Mujahideen fighters who were supported by the U.S. became the Taliban. And the Taliban was created under the uh, Pakistani intelligence services, which was funded by the U.S. And Pakistan was only told to um, distance themselves from the Taliban after 9-11. So, but regardless, um, even if you want to dispute that particular point, uh, undoubtedly, the U.S. does create terrorist groups um, and support them on a regular basis. Continuing on, the U.S. 
doesn't only support brutal regimes with poor human rights records. They install them. No need to imagine China supplying weapons and cash to oppressive governments. The U.S. currently does that. The moment he, talking about Lao 86, begins pretending his political system is better, China's governance is inferior, and or China should also change to a Western-style liberal democracy, which is supposed to be a system that responds to the demands of its people. Yet he, as one of its people, refuses to use that power, especially considering he's in a position of online influence, to make that change. He then, so because of this, he loses all credibility in pretending to care about the terrible things China might do, which are things his country currently does, at a level even worse than his imagined scenarios. Lao Y86 can, of course, choose to not care about that and take a do as I say, not as I do approach, which fits his superiority complex well. But when virtue signaling on all these points, with all of the ironic considerations above, and without acknowledging all of the things he's worried China might do are things that his country already does, and worse, mixed in with outright lies, removing al-Qaeda, U.S. following international laws, freedom to report or investigate on war crimes and accountability, is an epic lack of self-awareness made even more ridiculous by spewing this crap only days after leaving a country his government destroyed while people drop from U.S. military plane landing gears holding on in a desperate attempt to escape the chaos left behind. This is what I call a what the fuckism. Being surprised that people point this lack of awareness and disinformation is another what the fuckism. So, that's the real importance here. People in the West are supposedly living under a system of accountability that responds to the demands of its people. If its demands are to do all of these evil things, then that society and those people have no moral high ground on which it can stand to profess to others what systems they should use in their own countries. If you simply cannot affect the change that you're supposed to be able to change and influence, um, which is uh, on paper, then maybe your system isn't that great after all. And maybe you should reconsider your campaign of forcing your systems down the throats of others. If you find yourself using your time not to change your own government and to stop them from committing atrocities, and instead you find yourself spending your time trying to change what you consider to be an inflexible dictatorship on the other side of the planet because you can't even affect change in your own so-called democratic society, it's time to start taking a really good look at yourself. It gets sadder than just this, though. There's a guy who's associated with this crew, he started out as just a pretty big fanboy of Matthew Ties, but now they seem to be working a little bit more closely together. This guy is named Lewis Hand. This guy has been after me for a while, and I mostly ignored him because of, I mean, there are a few different reasons, but mostly because of how juvenile his arguments are and his understanding of the world. You know, to give you an example, he said, how could you possibly support Muslims, and this was in the context of supporting Muslims who have a common enemy with America, and be Islamophobic at the same time? <laughs> uh, apparently, if you support Muslims who are willing to fight against a common enemy, it's not because you're just using them, like the U.S. has over and over again. It's because you really care about the Muslims. I mean, how do you, how do you even begin addressing this level of ignorance? The other reason I didn't really talk about this guy is because he was very, uh, very closely associated with Corey Selby. I've spoken about him before. He's, um, you know, he pretends to be a human rights defender who speaks up for a animal rights in China, mostly in the context of shaming Chinese people, but who was a guy who was convicted of killing his two dogs in the U.S. and refused to do his community service. Um, so therefore, there's an open arrest warrant on him in his home state of Missouri. So... Lewis collaborating with this guy and, and helping him with all this video graphics and stuff like that, uh, amongst other indicators, you know, Lewis just came across as a troubled uh, individual mixed up with a really weird group of people. I should probably mention that his uh, buddy, actually, Corey Selby, perfectly illustrated my earlier points about supporting Muslims with a common enemy. He used it in the context of Indians. So listen listen carefully to why Corey supports Indians in his attempt to tell any, everyone that he's not racist after being called out for saying uh, old Chinese people were dirty and uneducated and not sophisticated like old people in America. This was his response. I support India, one of the largest Asian populated countries in the world. I support them in stopping the expansion of communist China. To say that we somehow dislike Asians or 
that we go against them or feel that we're better than them or some kind of superiority. Not at all. In fact, I think Asians are more important in this battle than white people. I think that it is time for Asian people in general from all countries to stand up against communist China. Because, to be perfectly honest, the West cannot do it alone. So he supports India to crush the only rising economic power in the region that's set to overtake the U.S. because they can't do it on their own. They're more important than white people in a battle where, if it turned into a hot war, I'm sure he'd want to put them on the front lines as well. <laughs> this was literally Corey's response and proof that he's not a racist. Anyway, let's return to Lewis Hand. I assumed he would have no way of empathizing with an anti-war, anti-aggression, po you know, pro-peace uh, ways of thinking. However, what I found out really shocked me. He went to anti-war protest to voice his opposition to the Afghan war. While, of course, it, it did no good, I was still really shocked. I didn't see that one coming. Now he has the same, you know, bullshit. Uh, uh, at least we could have a kumbaya session way of thinking, celebrating his freedom to bitch and complain about something he wasn't able to stop. Uh, but that's common stuff. Let's take a look at what he said here. Quite creative there with the BS, aren't you? I'm not making excuses for anything, just telling how it is. Just because that huge protest didn't change anything, at least there was still hope that it could have made a difference. It's a shame you're too pessimistic to understand the comp concept of hope. Well, Lewis, let me also just tell you how it is. The people you continue to bomb and terrorize or who have lost children don't give a shit about your hope. Your huge protest didn't change anything. That's the problem. So why don't you shut up about your superior system and most certainly stop trying to push it on other people until you figure out how to walk away with a bigger accomplishment than just a fuzzy, fleeting feeling of hope that's not going to bring people back. Lewis goes on to say, I was still allowed to do it, and although it might not have changed the outcome, it sent a clear message to the government at the time that a lot of people aren't going to take their crap. No, Lewis. You did take their crap, and you are going to continue taking their crap over and over again. And Lewis, oh, you're going to do one better. You're going to become an active part of the propaganda campaign designed to manufacture consent for the next war. You're ready to answer the call of duty to label anyone who questions the whole filled Xinjiang genocide narrative with so many similarities to yesterday's now debunked pro-war propaganda as genocide deniers, like you constantly do without ever taking a moment to take one critical look at the claims being made. Oh, Lewis, you'll do even more than that. You'll gush like a little fanboy over people like Matthew Tai, who is being propped up by the literal war criminals who lied their way through manufacturing consent for the very wars that you once protested. <laughs> Lewis is now supporting the very same narrative that the real winners of the Afghanistan war, the military industrial complex is now supporting and funding. They're literally recycling millions of dollars of Afghan war profits into think tanks, almost exclusively pushing the China threat story and Xinjiang genocide narrative, preparing for the next profitable conflict. What a disgrace, Lewis Hand. What an incredible disgrace. For those of you watching who are fully educated on how consent was manufactured for previous conflict, but you now found yourself adopting narratives which are heavily funded by the same governments and industries that lied to you over and over again, don't be a Lewis Hand. I don't need to say don't be a Matthew Ty. He, he's something far more deliberate and intentional. Lewis is simply an ignorant bystander. Granted, perhaps desperate for attention, but certainly someone who was supposed to, on paper, at least have the ingredients to know better. There's a few more characters from this crew of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy brains that I will explore in future episodes. But for now, I'm going to wrap this one up here, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.